I assume the working language is English, and uh, uh, I'm going to start the conversation today. It's mainly on something called open banking. Uh, this perhaps is not that much hitting the China yet, but I'm telling you that you know I started working on it three years ago when the European part really pushing this along, and recently U.S. is uh, is moving in a very significant way, and I will. We'll explain to you that what's happening now. The point of the departure from the existing framework, obviously, is on these fintech lenders. Part of the Ali's work, Ali's and End Financial is doing, get everybody excited. I would say ten years ago, that how they do it: personal and small business loans. Uh, open banking is a concept. Uh, it's it's basically a financial institution access use and the share customer transaction account data. Um, you can imagine that in the United States, uh, almost all the transactions are at, is in the traditional depository institution, so-called, and those transaction account flow data are well acknowledged, acknowledged as uh, important information source for making loans. So this is how this is so-called a transaction kind of hypothesis. Is that once I know your flow, I'm able to give you the loans. And if you think about it, it is exactly what End was doing. Um, and uh, they know these entrepreneurs' flows, etc. The question now is that uh, how can we, in the European uh, framework and the U.S. framework, to really give the control over right of the data back to the uh, depositors? For the consumers, rather than the who is gatekeeping these transaction data, and uh, and they, uh, these big institutions are, are owning the data. So this is the this is a, a big trend in the in the U.S. and the European right now. And I do have uh, uh, some paper, and I you know do some conceptual analysis, and I will explain to you. Uh, the second thing that uh, related to the to some of the uh, Eping's. Uh, 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 work that uh, is on this is how do, does the fintech compete with bank even though they have the open banking is this enough or not enough okay so those are the related questions let me just jump to the so-called open banking this is my favorite picture uh, used by uh, the Brazil central bank so Brazil central bank turned out you know to be Extremely forefront right now, if you look at what they do in the fintech implementation, it's led by Central, uh, central Bank, uh, the Bank of Brazil. I always thought that a, um, a PBOC should be the one um, because I was following these government-led uh, activities always, but at this point, it seems to be the Brazilian is the forefront on that. What they do, okay? So, so, so this picture, this figure is basically took from their website. They were basically just using a, a very simple way to explain what's open banking. So think about it initially, there's a guy here uh, who is uh, who's, uh, holding the iPad or the, um, um, the phones, smartphones. On the smartphones, uh, right now, if I took out of my Chinese smartphone, I have a bunch of uh, apps for the, for the banks. Let's say CIBC, uh, CIBC ABC, VOC, and then CCV, right? You, from Chinese, you know what are these uh, banks or what I'm talking about. But uh, the only thing that perhaps make a connection to them is either Alipay or <laughs> The CBDC that uh, you know we were chatting about, the, the ECNY. Uh, what the, the open banking would like to do is to making sure that there's a way to connect to them, and then uh, someone who are here put a check there is the guy who is controlling the data access among these institutions. And what's behind the technology is so-called API, and API is definitely not new. It's just that when you to get to the situation where people can use it, it took time and it took uh, uh, you know, intelligence to putting all these things together. So this is open banking, um, EU, UK, Brazilian, this is the government led, etc. US used to be extremely market driven, 
and uh, there are a bunch of uh, very interesting, innovative uh, uh, things they do. Uh, you know, the U.S. is always like saying that, you know, whenever you want a government to do something, a lot of people will ask, why can't uh, the private institution to do it? This is a reflected uh, principle uh, of that country. Uh, and, and, uh, but interestingly, that now that they realize this is a limit boundary of the market force, and that they were pushing it through the, through the government as well. I will explain that. Okay, uh, so, so here's one thing that uh, make it, uh, 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 super clear about uh, what uh, this is doing. Uh, so imagine you want to use a financial product offered by an organization other than your bank, and these information from your bank, such as the amount of money coming in and out. That's what I talk about, it's about the flow. Flow information, transaction account, super useful uh, to make decisions, make long, long decisions. Should you wish to stop using, oh, so then you then instruct your bank to share this information with this other institution or app, okay? So, um, and, and I, will, I visited the UK, um, uh, I have a friend there and he was showing me that how this is uh, uh, on the app, it's actually, it gets implemented. Basically that uh, there's a, a button, you can click on it and then just asking you what kind of uh, uh, information you would like to export to another uh, institution uh, through, through this network. Uh, and uh, often the time you can choose whether you share the p past year of the transaction account or ha past half year, okay? Those are the, just the choices that you can choose. All right, and uh, apparently this has implications on, uh, on, on lending, small business lending. You can see the open bank revolution, underwriting loans, you, you know, you, we would run hundreds of automatic rules, but uh, never fully ver verified with open banking, you, you know of these things. So those kind of things, are apparently it's extremely, I mean, in some sense, as economists are seeing this kind of things, we'll say, wow, this is a great, and indeed, I do think this is a great uh, push. Um, uh, however, that there are some, lots of uh, uh, Potential issues is that, uh, you know, when they talk about it, uh, is uh, first of all, that uh, there's uh, some welfare uh, discussion is that, uh, you know, how, how, how can we protect uh, these uh, 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 customers? And often the time we will see that uh, saying that, uh, ah, it's voluntary. So which means that uh, the uh, customers are controlling the data, which then implies that if, if this sharing is hurting them, they could stop themselves. As a result, it's indicating that uh, welfare never go down. Uh, and this is the last part, until last part, that I will say, ah, you know, you're jumping too much. This is why the economists come in, tell you that, ah, you know, that's not obvious. So this is uh, basically one of the paper I had. Uh, it's a theory paper, but it's a very simple idea. Uh, this is the title, is really the, you know, open banking when, when you can share. Uh, when the borrowers, not the lenders, right? Usually you're th we are thinking about it is lenders investing a lot of technology and all these things. I have some uh, other paper on that. But the nowadays, if you think about it in the future, in the next five years, in the United States, the open banking will impl being implemented. Then it's always the uh, uh, borrowers are thinking about whether I should want to share the information or not. Okay, so open banking is about open, ban open data sharing. Um, and disrupting the bank industry. But here's a really the important part that our paper was emphasizing is that all borrowers could be worse off despite the voluntary sign up. The, the key issue is that whenever you get to the information, there's a, something called information externality that immediately pops out and it's a super uh, powerful you know, economic force. It's a, Basically, it's a Milgram 1981 says that, you know, whenever you know it's possible to be shared, we know it's a good guy to want to share as a result. So if you do not share, that means you're a bad guy. So immediately, that even if that you want to protect yourself, you are not protected because, you know, you are being revealed about your own type. All these things just, just try to warn lots of discussions. You need a, a very rigorous economic analysis on those issues. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to also bring attention to you is that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, as I said, that uh, in the United States, open banking is, is, is being implemented. This was uh, last year, October. Uh, the CS, 
a CFPB. What's the CFPB? CFPB is, was the bureau established right after uh, a, a, a financial crisis is the dot frank outcome of the dot frank. Uh, it is, you know, everything about consumer finance protection is on there. So this is a director, Rahit. He was saying that in consumer financial services, we have a number of highly concentrated some markets, credit reporting conglomerates, the card networks, the corporate uh, processors, and more. It's critical that no one owns the so-called critical infrastructure. I, I believe that this logic was behind many things that a, 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 a PBOC has done. Uh, and uh, this, you know, I saw, uh, sorry, I forgot to add the dates. This was uh, a week ago. A week ago, they rolled out even more detailed planning, basically saying that uh, uh, we will accelerate the shift to the open banking through a new personal data rights rule intended to break down these obstacles. So, so just you know, hold on tight and uh, we, will, we will see what's happening in the, in the next year. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to, this slide is just telling you that not only the fintechers are, 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 are doing a lot, lot of things. What I can also see is that the banks are not sitting uh, idle, and it is uh, super important to recognize that, uh, you know, I can tell you my view is that uh, it is a great, great idea of so-called competition, but uh, whether equilibrium, in equilibrium that, uh, or as outcome of this part of the competition that uh, the incumbents uh, being taken over by the new, newcomers, that's not uh, the necessary outcome of a competition. Uh, it's just that the competing forces will uh, likely to push the incumbents to move forward. This is uh, definitely what we see. So I was, uh, there was a slide showing you that uh, one thing that uh, recent literature has not been focusing on, and we collect a lot of data, is to show you, try to show you that the incumbents, at least in the United States, and I believe in the European, is the, given the pressure, they were investing a lot. This IT investment is really a lot. And I believe that this is where the uh, uh, a regulator would come in and try to make the entire ecosystem become more resilient. Okay, thank you. I wonder whether you, you can uh, explain intuitively what is the condition under which open banking could make welfare lower, number one, and related to that, is anything about Brazilian economy that will tell you that Brazil, you know, that this condition, where's Brazil relative to that threshold? Is open banking making Brazil better off or worse off? Okay, good. Uh, so first of all, the, the, the open banking is a, a much bigger uh, concept than the, the particular question I'm looking at. A particular question I'm looking at is the idea that in the context of uh, loan making, let's say small business loans or consumer loans, where consumers sh uh, uh, using their portable data, try to get the best loan offer from the market, and then whether the presence of such a technology will help everybody, help the consumers or not. So that's a particular question. For Brazilian, the, the, let me ask, the, the, let me a answer the second question first. The, for, for Brazilian, the part of the open banking is together with their fast pay payment scheme called a PIX. That's a fascinating idea. And within three years, they basically, in, in some sense, that are from the consumer part side of it, they basically introduced a, a CBDC. Uh, in, the, in the sense that you can, you know, everybody can have their own key, uh, and with their own key, they can enable fast pay payment among firms, among 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 people, etc. It's under that realm, and they pushed out the open banking. And nowadays, that the open banking is on transaction, on sharing the credit information, on sharing on even insurance information, etc. So that's the long answer to your second question. The first question is on a narrow, uh, a defined uh, 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 issue that I was studying is on, is, is it possible that whenever you can share information, because of the information externality, uh, that uh, you know, even the good type of borrowers, you have a good type, you have a bad type, even the good type of borrowers will be worse off. The issue is really the idea of combining 
the, the data sharing decision together with the, um, a, a, a bank's competition. When the original fintech lender, we believe that uh, they are better at uh, processing the data, but they lack the data. And I believe that at the end, why they're doing so well is because they not only have the uh, processing information, but also have their flow transaction data flow information. Now think about that case back to some other country where these, let, let's say Amazon, uh, you know, they're doing this business loans. Think about Amazon, they already developed a really good algorithm. They do not have good data. But once they combine it with good data, they are actually are much powerful than the uh, incumbent banks. In that situation, then the Amazon bank could much better at a precisely pricing, and the precisely pricing implies that some of the uh, incumbent banks actually will worry that uh, about their being cherry picked or so called a winner's curse. As a result, it's actually make the competition much less. Uh, 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 accurate. Uh, as a result, in that case, then it is possible to make the, uh, uh, even the good type to be worse off just because of the good type will think about, it, okay, if I'm giving the information to Amazon, then they will become very, very powerful. But if I don't give them uh, the, 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 the the so-called credit inference will say, ah, the reason you are not sharing the data is because you belong to those bad type uh, pools. And it, for that reason is because of the combination uh, of the credit inference uh, together with the competition makes the, all the borrowers worse off. To me, I think that we are very, very far from that yet, but it is just a theoretical possibility.